He's funny. He's smart. He can act. He can sign. He can sing. He can play piano. Did I say he's cute? He's next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. You know the song, don't you? You recognize the song? I know the song. It kind of, yes. The saxophone. I edited myself into the song. <laughs> I love the song. I love it. The Bone and Beautiful. It's Hello, good. you guys. Bone and Beautiful interview coming on right now. I'm James Live Jr., your host here on AfterBuzz TV. And I have to bring you folks from the Bold and the Beautiful to sit down and talk to and get to know them a little better. We're spotlighting them. Yes, we are spotlighting them. And this gentleman, he really can do it all. I've already already admitted on my shy to crush on him. And so now I'm meeting him in person, and it's just it's all it's all true. He's done Broadway. Off Broadway, he's also done lots of TV. You have a recurring role on was it Iron Fist, also on Marvel, doing that. He plays Saul Fein Feinberg. I won't going crazy for a second. Feinberg, not really the second or, or junior age. Saul Feinberg, just I guess myself. just yeah. Saul Feinberg. Yeah. Your grandfather gets the same name. <laughs> Alex Wise. Hello. Hello. See the applause. Oh wow! Down. Wow. Down. <laughs> He'll be here for a while. Thank you for having me, James. I'm really happy to be here. Thank I'm glad you. you're here too. Um, it's no seriously, you are. I was doing my research on you. You're so multi-talented. Oh, thank you. Because you never know when, on these shows. You, they, they get people from everywhere. I mean, again, the casting department in Bone Beautiful, great job. Um, and they cast all of you guys. I was telling Courtney Gross, Gross like the same thing. The whole Spectra clan. You guys all work. Oh, good. Thanks. Which is because uh, you, you're playing off a legacy character yourself too, especially. Yeah, it's it's really it, it, uh, that's very meaningful to me to be a part of something that has uh, uh, so many people are invested in the history of this show, and so I really uh, am very honored to be a continuation of, of that legacy. That is the Bolt and the Beautiful. Did you see any of the late Saul's work? The, the, the guy who played Saul, his work. I did, Michael Fox. Yeah, yeah, I watched a lot of clips of him right after I got this job, and. Uh, Especially at the beginning, I was inspired um, by what he did and by the sweetness and the support that he gave to Sally. And then uh, as it's gone on, I've um, been allowing myself, I guess that's the best word, allowing myself to branch off from what he did and try to really create my own character and be my own guy. You're doing I think, it. Thanks, thanks. I mean, I think Saul the Third, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Is there, yeah, we don't know you know your father or anything, so maybe <laughs> I don't, yes. I don't know what his name is yet, um, <laughs> but maybe we'll find out together. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, he really is his own guy, so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to embrace that and... Yeah. Uh, and pave my own way with it. Well, in one way that's happening, and this is the writers doing, of course, is that I think the original Saul always had a crush on Sally, but it was never, I mean, he never really went as far to like really um, to do anything. Where you actually are, I mean, we were so, we were so heartbroken last <laughs> week's episodes and the week before's episode. I mean, you really wanted to be there for Sally and be your character and really be a a, a, a partner, and she dropped you for Thomas. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... And you played it so well, though. You played it so well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, so, that. as an actor, I mean, how, those scenes, like, how did it feel for you? Like, you're basically being turned down. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I just drew on my real-life experience. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No! Um, you know, I, I just... Uh, I Well, uh, thankfully, I have such amazing scene partners, and... and uh, when I'm there with uh, with Courtney Hope, and yes. uh, it, I mean, it all feels very real to me. It feel I feel very invested in um, Courtney as Courtney and Courtney as Sally. I, I just I love her so much, and yeah. so to play opposite her, I she gives me so much to work with, and then I can just um, do my best to just be in the scenes, if that makes any sense. Makes sense. Well, you, yeah. you gotta be present in your, all your scenes, obviously. You gotta yeah. be present in the acting. She's so good. I mean, Courtney Hope is just like me. She's, she's so good. She's an outstanding actor. I she, feel very lucky to, to be there with her. She's and she had to really come, her shoes were big to fill. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. The the legacy that she's following is yes. incredible, but I think she's doing a pretty good job at creating her own legacy. She's I mean, incredible. I agree. And your, and your costuming. Very interesting. It's very, you and her both kind of dress like in the past, makes it the modern. I love it though. I love it though. People, people, all my fans are like, "Yeah, we like the way you guys kind of look. It's kind of part '40s and whatever, and then that's up to date too." Um, you know what's going to happen for you? For Saul, he's going to be kind of this kind of retro guy. You know, I have no idea. I'm I'm glad though that uh, I think my hairstyle is becoming a little less. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it was uh, kind of. You know, and I, I absolutely love the hair department. This, is, but um, I just can't stress that enough. They're my favorite people on that set. But um, 
but you know we've we've together we've found a way of yeah. um, making me look a little cooler. You know, I think Saul deserves to look at least a little. Yeah, cooler. why not? You know, I know I haven't gotten the girl yet. Yes. I know that I'm getting rejected left and right on this show. However, you know, I have to have some dignity. Yes. And so we're styling my hair up a little bit, and I feel a little cooler. I'm not gonna lie to you. But I had to laugh. I had to laugh because the the scenes, one of the scenes I speak with you and the hugely tall Pearson Frode. He, you know the thing huge. is, he's really yeah, he's really tall. But I watch the show; he makes me look like I'm four feet tall. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm like I'm five seven, you know. Yes. So I'm not a tall guy, but I'm not you're that not, no, short. That's, no, you're not that short. No. no, he makes me look. I mean, like I'm he the mayor of, of Munchkin City, and and um, with all due respect yes. to the mayor of Munchkin City, yeah, of course, of course, who, of course you yes. know had a very difficult job and did it well. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, I, I just I watch those scenes. I'm like, jeez, can they give me an apple box to stand on? <laughs> so that's the joke that I have with, with I like Pearson. That. Uh, you know, we're like uh, one apple box over here, at least a half apple, please. Um, no, but he, but even for me, I mean, I, I've met he's super, super, super tall. Yeah, he uh, is. it's like a Smurf in the Valley of the Giants. I was saying. <laughs> sure. And no, no, the Smurf. We love the Smurfs. With no disrespect to the, the Smurfs, Smurfs, they did a very difficult job and they did it very well. <laughs> is that right, James? <laughs> they did. They did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, but uh, there's but there's a scene where you and your acting was so good in it. You're seething. You're, he's trying to talk down, and the fans agreed with me. He was hard on you, and he shouldn't have been because it really wasn't. You weren't the mastermind behind all this stuff. It was basically Shirley was the mastermind behind all this stuff, but. He went on hard on you, and you looked at him like you wanted to climb him and beat him up. Like, yeah. That's like that's, that's how it looked. It was like your your but your acting was so good. You just you were just like, if you could cuss on camera, you would have. I can wow. tell. That's how that's how you looked. Well, you were angry. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, you know, we we had a lot of fun playing those scenes. Yeah. They, it was great to have an opportunity on this show to to play that kind of vengeful and conniving person yes. you know when uh when when that whole situation brings out all the anger within me that's yeah. um that's pretty fun that's a great challenge yeah so i'm just glad to be able to play those scenes and then uh and we got to really dive in and you know yeah. dig and Pierce is a nice guy which is so funny he's like he's like a goofy goofy nice guy you know guy. we we laughed so much <laughs> on the set and and especially i think it was gosh i can't I think I think these scenes appear, but I mean I have another conversation with him. That's not a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we off camera we were cracking up <laughs> I'm so sure. hard. I'm and, sure. And it was it was pretty tough. On and <laughs> they came over the uh, the microphone and they're like, guys, please pull it together. We need we want to get out of here. <laughs> we were like, sorry, like, I'm so yes, sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know. So I'm I'm glad that yeah. uh, there's such fun people on the show and yeah. we we can laugh and and you know sink our teeth into these these fun scenes yes. that uh, yes. give us a lot to play. And you get to you get to work with my girl Patricia Darbo. Oh I my mean gosh. like come on I mean, to me she's she's a legend to me anyway. I mean I just I love her so I've known her off and off for like twenty years. She's just like the best. Yeah, I I, best. I hope to know her for a long time yes. too. She's uh She's incredible. She's yeah. so much fun. Uh, I, I don't mean I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm good really spirit. she's a good spirit. I'm really in love with these with these cast members I get to play yeah. with each day. I'm, yeah. I'm very very fortunate I get to be there with them. Yeah. I think they they make this experience as great as it is. Yeah, because you've been around. I mean, you've done. I mean, so we're gonna talk about some other. So we're gonna, we'll get back to Bold and Beautiful and some stuff there. But we'll about some because you've done other things too. And you've done. I mean, you've done. Okay, let's 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 name some of these. <laughs> these shows. I mean, these are some of the shows you've done. I mean, you've done others. I loved Bad Judge. I wish the show continued. Thanks, I thought me it was too. a great. I thought it was a great show. Kate Watson thought it was a great job. She was so kind. She was so, oh, she was kind. She was so kind and nice to everyone. I always feel like uh, when I'm on a TV show, uh, the star always, uh, oftentimes, sets the tone of, of what's happening. Makes sense, right? And um, uh, on Bad Judge, she was so funny and nice, wow. and and that really trickled down, and it was such a joyous set to be on. Wow. I, I had a really great couple of days on there. That's nice to know. Yeah. Uh, you've done Masters of Sex. I did. Talk about talk about uh, now thinking a Bad Judge. Now we're talking about a show Masters <laughs> of Sex. I mean, like, was it, so you, it's a period piece, isn't that isn't that in the fifties or? That's 60s? right. I dressed pretty much exactly the same as I do with Saul Feinberg. Uh, <laughs> You're like, um, I know these clothes. I know. Yeah, I was like, oh, I got that. <laughs> Part my hair hard on the side. We got it. All right, let's do it. Uh, yeah, yes. Masters of Sex. That was that was an amazing time. That was the first job I did in Los Angeles. Uh, oh wow! About three years ago. Wow. Yeah. And where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. As Cleveland. a Black nice eyes. Midwestern yes. boy. Yes, I'll and be I'll be in Cleveland in a few weeks. So I oh yeah, Cleveland really? Yes. For what? That's some Bob Evans. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I love Bob Evans. No, Bob Evans is the bomb. They have the best breakfast on earth. They have real biscuits and gravy. Yeah, they do. Not the stuff out here in California. 
real biscuit and gravy. That's real good. I used to go there with my dad a lot when I was a kid. I have, my, I have family in Middlebrook Heights. I have family in Brunswick. Oh, my gosh. Medina. I know, I, trust me, I know I'm on Ohio. Okay, we, yeah, we I was from, uh, I'm from Beachwood, like near Shaker Heights. Yes, oh, Shaker Heights, right? yes, I know yeah, that. Yeah, people know Shaker Heights, I yes, think, do, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, know, I know me from Ohio. <laughs> uh, actually, a lot of Ohioans actually in California now, they're doing this business, so I know a lot of people from Ohio here. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, okay. I mean, Cleveland was so great to grow up in, yeah. you know, I think it has... Um, an interesting reputation around the country oh, as being yeah. the butt of jokes, but actually growing up there was wonderful because it has such an incredible art scene, and so I was always doing plays, and there was always theater groups for me to be a part of, and so it helped me so much um, become um, an actor, and I think wow. that's true for so many people in the performing arts who grew up in Cleveland, that mm -hmm. they can attribute so much of what they learned to um, the kind of youth programs that are available, and the, also the professional theater that they have in Cleveland is amazing, so I was I very... Yeah, I was very lucky to be a part of that, and then uh, I think that's why so many, so many uh, Clevelanders find themselves in Los Angeles and in New York and so many other performing hubs around the around the world. I agree. A lot of good folks from the Midwest. I love the Midwest. Me too. I love I love the attitude. I love the feeling. I love the food. Um, and in Cleveland, it's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there. I've been there three times. Really? I love it. You ever been in there yet? No. You have to go. But I don't know. It's like, you know, when they have like a, you know, an early Broadway exhibit, I'll be there. But, you know, until then, I'll just, I'll be Netflixing. So. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Well, I like music, I guess. It, I went there once when they had a Bruce Springsteen exhibit. It was really good. Oh, um, I bet that was cool. It was actually really cool. But it's a huge place. And it's just, it's, I mean, it has like four stories. And it's just, it's there. And it's right there. The lake, the lake effect. Remember the lake effect all the time? It's <laughs> yeah. called the lake effect. That's right. Everything's a lake effect. I remember that. So it's kind of cool. Um, you're also on a show that I like. That I was, I was like, like, I guess he was on that, bored to death. Yeah, Do with, you the, with the eclectic people that were on that show, I'm like, I'm trying to remember which one you were on there. So I the was episodes. Ted Danson's assistant named <sighs> Stephen, and he kept forgetting my name. That okay, that's okay. Now, yeah. now it's coming together. Yes. Yeah. Um. So that was the first TV job I ever did, and I got to work with Ted Danson. Hello. It's not a bad way to start. Uh, and and what's his name? Jason Schwartzman. All that yeah, Jason Schwartzman, Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Uh, it's an eclectic group of people. Yeah, and, and incredible comedians on that show. Yeah. Incredible actors, and so yeah. I, I that was really cool. I was I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> and I was scared out of my mind. Um, but I was very thankful to be there, yeah. and I had Ted Danson showing me the ropes. He would oh. say, "Okay, now look, we're gonna go to this camera. We're gonna go in for." your coverage and he was the one who taught me about how to how to be on a set wow okay ted danson who could say that i know right like, who that... could oh midwest people are the best our engineers from midwest <laughs> also do you know they, 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 are, they are the best i think i think they are i really do i love Midwest people i like them too yes um but so ted danson i mean we talk we're talking cheers becker i mean just i mean all kinds of just i mean yeah, and uh, is it The Good Place? Is the Good the Place he has now? right now. Yes, Good Place he has right now. Yeah, yeah, he's a wonderful actor and a really nice guy. I mean, he would cool. always take the time to say, how are you? How's your family? He, you know, he, he invested in who I was as a person as well as a young performer. And I'm very thankful to him. I, I've not seen him since that show, but I hope to run into him one day and, and thank him for, you know, for helping me out so much. I wish it would be funny if you could remember your name. That would be the funny part. <laughs> so you're, uh... <laughs> then you have to laugh. You're like, there you go. Uh, you know what? It's on brand, Ted. Yes, there you <laughs> it's go. on brand. Yeah. Uh, Modern Family, the episode of Modern Family. I did, so yeah. So it's kind of funneled you through Modern Family. So what was that experience like? Um, Do you remember? You know, it was uh, it was so um, fast. I think okay. I was there for two hours. Oh wow! <laughs> and um, but it was so cool to be part of uh, to be part of a show that's so beloved and so widely yeah. seen. And yeah. uh, and I got to work with um, with um, Ed um, O'Neill. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Ed O'Neill. Another um, another like TV legend. I know. I, I've worked with so many I uh, have. TV legends. In Masters of Sex, I was with uh, Michael Sheen in all my yeah, scenes hello, and, yes. and Lizzie Kaplan. I've so really I've I've done okay uh, working yes. with some. Uh, People have really shown me, uh, yeah. you know, how to be in front of a camera. How, is that, okay, that's a good question. So is that, because, you know, we don't know, so we get into this business, we don't always know what we're going to know. And, uh -huh. they, and we may have our own ideas what the business may be like when we come in it. So are you pleasantly surprised that you're meeting people who are nicer than you thought would be, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I well, I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not surprised, okay. but I'm, I'm just... Um, I'm humbled and I'm, I'm thankful when I get to meet someone I respect who's also really kind to me. And I, I can learn from them and yeah. I can be their friend. And and that's happened more often than not. Yeah. But I think in this day and age, after all of the terrible things that happened in the first you know, era of Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the peop more often than not, the people who are doing well today have been kind along the way. 
There's so many people. That's true. I'll go with you. I'll go, I'll go with you on that. I, I mean, I think, you know, and of course, we all have exceptions. We all yes. have heard stories or experienced yes. things, whatever. We don't, we yes. don't talk about that on on Mike. I'll tell you later. Yes. Um, we'll exchange some people who didn't like me in the soap world. I'll yeah. tell you a few people who don't like me. <laughs> but most people are really nice. I love them. Yes. Good. Yes. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I've been very, um, yeah. I've just been thankful to, to work with people like Ted Danson, with, yeah. with Michael Sheen, with Patrika Darbo, people yeah. whom uh, I respect and I, I love. Who've been around for a long time and they get it too. They get it. They totally get it. Um, AJ says, I'm trying to read, make sure I get your names correctly. Who are people, there are people who are watching. Oh, good. AJ says, Peace says, He was amazing on Iron Fist. Thanks. Thanks, so, AJ. So now you're part of that universe too on some level, <laughs> yeah. which means you, won't, you will never be let go of that because for, you've joined Soaps, so now you're in forever for that. <laughs> and now you're part of this Marvel, you know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, it must be really interesting. I mean, it's been quite a year of, of joining <laughs> these two uh, universes. Yes. I did not expect for my life, but I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be I'm a part sure. of both of them. Uh, Iron Fist was an awesome experience. Yeah. I mean, that was another one. I was working with David Wenham, all my scenes with okay. um, the great David Wenham, who was yeah. in Lion and he was yeah. in Lord of the Rings. I yeah. mean, this is an incredible actor. <laughs> yes. I know, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> another one, I was yeah. like, oh, wow, okay, that's how he does it. Okay, watch David Wenham, see wow. what he does. And yeah. I could, you know, I can pick up all of these um, uh, techniques or, or, you know, tips from all these great people. It's really cool. I, I really like playing, uh, you know, dorky, nervous assistants because I often get to uh, work with these um, powerhouses. Yeah, I guess so, who, right? Right? And so it's, it's served me well thus yeah. far. Yes. Um, <laughs> but Iron Fist was another where um, I was uh, very uh, humbled to be a part of such a... How, well, how did that come into your orbit? How did the Iron Fist, how did that come to you? I mean, because I'm, I'm sure it's well, a coveted spot and people want to be in a Marvel TV show yeah. or film or anything. Yeah, you, you know what? Um, it started off as just um, an audition okay. for um, from my from my uh, from my agents, um, but it was for something for this unknown project with some weird coded name. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I was auditioning all for. Right. And all I had to do was make a videotape. I think it was uh, like an audition tape. I think it might have been three or four lines long. That was it. It was okay. just right to the point. And it was something of me getting slammed up against a wall and choked. And I was like, Well, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, drawing my experience from last weekend. <laughs> um, yeah. um, think about summer camp. Yeah, there you go. Um, there there you go. go. I got it. Yeah, um, it's great. Um, and so I made this tape and you know and moved on with my life and <laughs> kept doing oh, other that's, stuff. That's... And then I got a phone call from uh, my agent who said, "Hey, you're actually up for this thing, and you have a callback." And by the way, what this is is the new Marvel television show for Netflix. I was like, "Are you kidding?" I know. Me? Like, we just been like, "What? Why? Why?" <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes, I, if I get a call and they're like, "Hey, you got this job," the first thing I say is, "Why?" Because <laughs> you're good. That's why. That's Thanks. Why. Thanks, James. Yes. I'm trying to uh, accept that, but yes. Um, uh, so, so I, I had this callback, and it was a few days later. And within that time frame, I binge watched all of the Marvel shows that were available. Okay. And and, and uh, at that time, it hadn't been Luke Cage yet; it was just oh, Jessica okay. Jones and Daredevil. Okay. So I watched um, all uh, two seasons of Daredevil and one of Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. And I was um, watching, and then I would try to act out the scenes as they were doing them, so I could get the style. You know, because it's right. very yeah. I mean, just like soaps has its own style, yes. so does the Marvel universe, yeah. which is all you know, very low hush tones and very. You know, and, uh, yes, yes. and everything is underplayed. <laughs> and, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love and it. I mean, I'm not used to that, especially as yeah. someone who comes from theater. Uh, from theater, and the I'm like, the voice sometimes <laughs> way back there can hear you. Right. I mean, yes. you would fit in very well yes. in the theater yes. too. Yes. You know, you would you would hit that back wall <laughs> yes, very I would. well. Yes, I would. So we should talk about that after. <laughs> yes, we can yes. do a scene. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, she had to underplay it on TV. Where, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I was I was uh, trying to get down that style, and uh, and so then I got to my callback and here's a little uh, fun anecdote Ooh, yeah. they, they gave me a scene uh, they said this is not for your character uh, we're going to give you a scene for the callback that's not for your character it's okay. something else but we just want to see you uh, read some some other stuff okay. and I was like okay great you know, I that's can... not common right not really in not, no. well no I mean it's I mean, it, I think I've seen it where they give you um, some uh, scenes that are that are like your character okay. that are not for the show because they still want to keep the show under wraps. They don't want anything to leak, and I understand that. Um, but they said we're going to give you something totally different, not your character. That hadn't happened to me before. Yeah. Um, so they gave me this scene that was a uh, like a fifty-year-old man 
uh, talking to his young son. That's close to my age. <laughs> wow, fuck up already. So I was like, oh, wow, well, okay. this is a, a nice acting challenge for me. Okay. So I was like, let me tell you how it is, Sonny. You know, I was really, I, I was working so hard on my, on my. On we my, don't sound that old, do we? No, like, no, but I was just trying to do something. Yeah, you know? I know. that's good. And then I got to the callback, to the callback, and and I read the first line, and then the casting director said, wait a second, what scene do you have? And I said, uh, uh, this one. I showed her. She said, oh, um, some wires have been crossed, and I, I don't know who it was, but you got the wrong material. This is not oh my the God. right thing. And I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I practically fell to the floor yes. and wept. And she was like, all right, just calm down. Yes, so and, yeah. uh, it's real okay. It's real okay. Yeah, so take this. Uh, yeah. Why don't you take this, uh, this actual scene you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> take this away, come back in 30 minutes, and we're going to do okay. it. And uh, I did it as quickly as I could. I was cramming in a cafe. Wow. I came back. I did the scene. The next day, I was cast on a Marvel show. It was really wild. Yeah. Um, and then the experience of being there was wonderful. Yeah. Everybody was, um, uh, I mean, very serious and very invested. And, in, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. But, but it you was loved really it. Cool. It, was a good, it was a good experience. Yeah. My, my thing is, okay, so side note, do you like taping, auditioning tape, or do you like being in the room and auditioning? Well... Well, they both have their, their merits. Yes. Having, doing an audition tape, I get to do 20 takes until yeah. I'm happy with what I do. Yes. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and yeah. being in uh, the audition room, I can be sure that uh, they're actually seeing the work that yes. I do. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. For all I know, they're yeah. just, you know, they're not going to even watch the tapes right. or, or, you know, they already found their person or, um, or, or at least I get to have a conversation with the casting director and get a feel for it, for what it is they want. And, you know, have a, a more personal experience. Yeah. So I've seen both of those things help me. I've seen both of those things hurt me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think there's any right answer. Okay. Um, I'm just curious if you like one or the other, but, but both you find, you, you'll do either one. You're like, I'll audition however you want me to, right? You know what? As long as I get to audition, as long as I get to, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, <laughs> be up for these things and uh, and hopefully continue to do work I'm proud of, then then it's then it's a good life. It's okay. I'll tell you something. I, ha I interviewed uh, Ed Asner, who was, oh, wow. uh, yeah, I got to, that was one of my, Crowning glories of interviewing somebody, and I've also interviewed Eric Braden from The Restless. Yeah, yeah. And and um, both of them have told me on camera that even auditioning, it's still acting. Oh yeah. So it's like it's any chance to get a chance to act, it's still good. Whether you get the part or not, you had that ten or fifteen minutes, five minutes, two minutes, you got to act. Yeah, I mean that's that's how I've had to reframe it in my mind because you know there are a billion auditions I didn't get and there are going to be a billion I yeah. continue to not get mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just like that's the life of an actor yeah. so every single audition I go on it has to be a chance for me to sharpen my skills and to meet new people and to try my hand at different things yeah. and, um, and, and that um, oftentimes is enough. Um, if I have worked really hard on it and I can walk away feeling proud of the work I've done, then a lot of times I can say to myself, okay, all right, it doesn't yeah. matter if I don't get that job because yeah. I did really well today right. and, uh, and I feel proud of the work that I did. So yeah. the more I can hone that in for myself, I think the better experience I'll have in this business, which is pretty unforgiving as we both know. Yes, we do know that. We want you here for a long time. <laughs> we want longevity for you. That's why I'm, I'm, you. I'm trying to bestow that on him. Longevity, too, longevity. Well. Thanks, I appreciate that. Um, because yeah, this business is unforgiving. It's not, it's not as easy, and, but it can be rewarding. Oh, it, 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 incredibly. Incredibly rewarding. Yeah. I mean, this year alone, I've been very lucky to I mean, the Marvel show and to be on this soap with yes. these people I really, really love. Okay, so have you been to any fan events yet on either? Not Sorry. yet. Okay, I'm still we'll, not convinced we'll, 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 I have fans. We'll talk. Do you way. have fans? You have fans. I kind of me. don't believe you. I'm one of your fans. I got, but you have fans. Uh, no, I don't. I got stopped by one <laughs> woman in line for a bathroom. That's the only time. What'd she say to you? She said she's been watching the show since the be since the beginning. Okay. She said, "And what's your name?" And I and I said, "Saul. I play Saul." She's like, "Saul, that's right. You're good." I was like, "Thanks." In so a that, way, that but in a it. way, that's probably better than somebody gushing over you in a way. She, it's like, oh, you're good. No, she was really nice. Yeah. She's listening. You're really nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, we're going to snort. We're going to talk after you've gone to a couple of events on either side, and we're going to talk. There. You're going you're gonna to see. I yeah, don't you have know, fans out there. James, I don't know. Because especially in the soap world, mm -hmm. any kid can be a minor character. They will hold on to them. If they like him, they will hold on to them. And you're not a minor character. You are, you are a character on Bold and Beautiful. Yeah, but do they like me? I don't like you. How can he not like Saul? Tell me. I mean, how can he not like you? You are loyal, and, and you're there for the, for the team, and you're actually a nice person. You don't right, do but I'm like, like half the size of Thomas. 
Thomas is like two of me. Not everybody wants a big, tall, dreamy man. I don't believe you. Yeah, I, I try to convince <laughs> myself too. I'm like, well, you know, the old lad. No, but no, you have a chance too. Thanks. I, I like to think I you do. You do. You do. I mean, I'm certainly not playing this character like I'm, you know, like I'm already defeated. I'm really trying to. to no, you are. Yeah, I, I want to get the girl, and I'm still, I'm still hoping that you know there's a chance. It's a soap. You never know, right? You, you never, never know. You never know what can happen. You never know, and I am very attractive. You are. All right, so I already said that already. Twice or three times. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna show you how why he's more attractive. <laughs> we're gonna show our first clip. It's just him singing. So let's this one. I think it's 2015, I believe. Oh, she made you weird. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you yeah, Thank you. You're so funny in between. And young girls, Your hair really absolutely so bad too. You can film this. <laughs> like that. You give him permission, you know? <laughs> yes. You have an amazing voice. Be like, seriously, you have an amazing voice. Mm -hmm. I want to show that. So you're you're so good. You're so, I know you're watching. Going, oh my God, you're so. Someone taped that. They want to show it now. This is a clip from 2016. We're gonna show it to you. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the last midnight. It's the last wish. It's. The So, you're so good. This is a little Sondheim celebration. I love Sondheim. And they wanted us to do a song we wouldn't normally do, so I did uh, The Witch from Into the Woods. Which I, which I, I love Into was... the Woods. Me it was, too. It was, just, it was just here. Did you see it? It was just here? I missed it. It was good. It was big bad. Had to get your wish. Doesn't matter how. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. It's the last. I, I cannot believe we're watching this. There you go. I, I, want, to show, I want to show that. It's just, you're so good. Thank you you're very so, much. Your so your tone, everything. It's just you're so and I love that. I love Into the Woods. And I like it was just here recently here at the Pantages. Um it's you're so good. Thanks, James. What Thanks. a great way. How long have you been singing? I guess um uh, my whole life. I started off by doing musicals and um it wasn't until I was uh um an adult that I really uh, found my way into television. So you did so you did so you did musicals based like in high school. Oh yeah, but my first one I was six years old. Wow. Yeah. I was in the ensemble of Oliver, and I've never been happier. Oliver. Well, folks, you guys, I mean, he's done Spring Awakening on Broadway. Um, this is Strata Jones. He's done Broadway. Off Broadway, he did Ride the Cyclone. He did Bear. I mean, I mean, you just, I mean. I did, uh, I did Wicked. You did Wicked? Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, one. That's one people know. So now, here, okay, here's just a couple pictures. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's from Ride the Cyclone. Yeah, You're yeah. in the middle. That's me. That's you. <laughs> That's just Spring Awakening, isn't it? Yeah, that's me uh, crouching down on the side, being a uh, being a rock star. Very sexy there in that picture. Okay, I want to ask you a question about Spring Awakening. Yeah, I saw of it. Did you see it here? No, I saw it on Broadway. Did you see the uh, revival or the original? I saw the original. Okay. Duncan Sheik wrote the music. We love Duncan Sheik. Of course, yeah. he was a '90s artist. He had hits in the '90s and yeah, yeah. became this huge now songwriter. Well, okay, so I didn't realize the, kind of the theme of Spring Awakening until I was halfway through watching the show. <laughs> That was just, it was just it was, I, I, I know what I, I know what I was thinking it was going to be when I came in there, but I was like, oh, so there's some kind of serious thing in there, kind of. Oh yeah. Which I didn't realize. I don't, I don't want to give it away. People who haven't watched the musical or not, I don't want to give it away or not. But well, it's yeah, all about the, the way. Um, if um, especially in uh, older times, but it's certainly mirrored now. Um, when uh, parents refuse to talk to their children and explain yes. sexuality to them, yes. then uh, those misunderstandings uh, result in, you know. Destruction. Yes, that's what I'm saying too. I'm like, yes, it's a. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize that, and the songs were all born out of that. Um, and I just, I just, it was, it was, I, lo I loved it, but I didn't realize what I was seeing until I started seeing it. I, I, I guess I went and say, oh, Duncan Sheik, I know who he is, and the, sure. the, the trailer I saw for it seemed really fun. I was in New York, but I was trying to see, I was trying to see at least one show when I'm in New York on Broadway. I was trying, or, or, even off, or even off Broadway, I try to see shows. Yeah, that's that was a time. good one to see. Yeah, the last one I saw was uh, Heather's the Musical. Which was really oh, fun. I love that. I had some friends in that. It was good. It was it was, it was, it was really good. And the night that I went, 
the original guy, um, Christian Slater, came to the performance. No way. And we, I got a picture of him and the guy who played him on uh, JD on there. That good. is really cool. It was, it, was very, it was very cool. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so how did you, okay, I, I have to ask, because how did you get into Broadway? I mean, this is like, I mean, millions of actors and singers are applying to, I mean. Yeah, well, well, the first, um, I, uh, I moved to New York first yes. um, before Los Angeles, and uh, and I was just auditioning for for shows all the time, right. and uh, and uh, I, I was working, uh, I was doing regional shows around the country and um, some smaller things. Okay. And one of the smaller shows that I did uh, it was an off Broadway musical called Lysistrata Jones, and then that got swept up by good reviews yeah, and it did. and went to Broadway. Yeah, and uh, it was my dream come true. It was incredible. And and then the second time it happened, I had come to LA already and uh, and I did a show out here uh, I did sp the Spring Awakening uh, mm -hmm. production out here and it was yep. the Deaf West production so they incorporated yeah. American Sign Language yes. and and, and uh, young deaf actors into the show I mean it was very really, cool very very it cool it was very cool and and that thing we we're talking about with Spring Awakening the way it's about um, parents who won't explain things to their children that whole thing was heightened because it was um, you know, hearing people who wouldn't yeah. communicate with deaf people, and so that chasm wow. was even was was even bigger. I mean, it was wow. it was really amazing what yeah. what uh, Michael Arden uh, did, who directed it, did yeah. with the show. But um, uh, that also got swept up in some good reviews, and and I got to go back to Broadway, <laughs> and it got to perform on the Tony Awards, oh and I performed on I was on Late Night with Seth Meyers. We did oh. my big song on Late Night with Seth Meyers. So if you uh, if you YouTube. Um, Spring Awakening, uh, Seth Meyers. You'll see, uh, you'll see my big song. Oh my God, that's it's amazing! I didn't find, I didn't find out when I was looking for stuff. I'm have to look, I'm looking to see it. No, but because okay, so to be on Broadway, I mean, there's there are shows about like, chorus lines about that. It's about getting, you know, getting being in the chorus on a yeah. show on Broadway. Like you actually say you were in Sarah Productions. Did you know the gravity of that? That when you got when you got your first job when you went to Broadway. Were you like, oh my God, I'm on Broadway? Like, oh, yeah. did, it, did it hit you? Oh yeah, I've never felt so much uh, pressure. Well, I'm sure. And I've never felt so much, uh, so much joy. Yeah. And I mean, it was my childhood dream come true. I, I, I didn't know if, uh, you know, I always knew I wanted to be an actor, but I, I never really knew, you know, will I be able to do what I want to do? I know because I know how hard it is. Yes. And so uh, the fact that I did, I've always been. And, and have continued to um, do new kinds of things and, and, and get to reinvent myself like yeah. in the soap world. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm eternally thankful and grateful and I just keep trying to do good work and you know put my best foot forward and all Well, that. you're winning. The fact, that oh. you're, the fact that you're doing it, you're winning. I always say just, just I mean, you're, you're on your lane, you're, your things are coming up for you, you're getting projects, that's a, that's a win. Thanks. I think alone. I think alone. I mean, in fact, I mean, you believe done... me, there are so many setbacks. You um, know? Yeah, we, we know. We, we know. I want <laughs> yeah. people, people to know out there who who look at us here and they're going to watch and they think we have it all or whatever they think we have. And it's just, <laughs> oh, he's on TV. He does this? It doesn't. It doesn't come easy no, for any very, of us. It doesn't come easy hard. at all. It's very hard. It takes hard work, dedication, faith, passion, all that stuff to do it. And sometimes I don't just I don't just say there's luck because I, I don't believe in luck. But but I was telling Courtney on on our show. I always believe that luck favors the prepared. Yeah, yeah. I mean that if there is luck, I mean I think it'll come to you if you, if you, if what you said, if you put in that preparation, if you're always ready for it, the opportunities will come. A couple of them mm -hmm. will come, but you have to be ready to receive yes. that opportunity. Yes, definitely. Um, so I'm sure your parents are probably proud of you. They said you're on Broadway, so like I'm sure there was like, oh my god, this is this is like crazy talk. Yeah, I have great parents who, uh, <laughs> yeah. who l love the arts, who love. Oh, they do. The, so they do. So they support they that you're it. that you're an actor. Oh yeah, okay. they're great. That my parents live in New York City. Oh, my my mom great. sees almost every single show. She's a better theater goer than I am. Oh my god. Yeah. I wish I could do that. I, wish, I mean, that's only New York, York City is my magic city. I love New York City. I think it's just such a the buzz, the the subways, the rats. I mean, all of it. I just <laughs> love it. So I love it so much. Yeah. You live there. I mean, like, how do you handle the harsh winters? And how do you handle? I mean, these? barely. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, it, it can get cold in Cleveland. I mean, get, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying, I mean, in New York, it seems like it's just. Ugh. It's hard. It is hard. <laughs> you have to go for an audition. It's like you know, oh, 20 gosh, degrees. It's like yeah, it's 20 degrees, or even worse, it's 100 degrees, and oh, you yes. you know sweat through your clothes, and you show up looking like you know, <laughs> like a swamp monster, and you're like, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Hire me. <laughs> Put the yes. camera. Me, you know. 
<laughs> I'm ready. You know, it's, it's so it's it's not easy. You know. Do you think New York? Uh, well, I'm gonna use some bad English right now. Grew you up? You think a little bit? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. But but so did uh, Los Angeles. That's yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean there. I mean so many experiences I've had have you know kicked my butt and made yeah. me more of an adult. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know New York. New York can be really harsh. I know that. It's, it's, it's kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm yes. still growing up, though. Yes. You know, I still have a ways to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ways to go. Yes, of course. I have yeah. things to learn. Believe it or not, I have things oh, to learn. Geez. I always tell people the education ends when you die. Yeah, that's true. So you should always be learning something. Yeah. Always. I learn things all the time. And our people who are in here are saying hello. Um, Nikisha Jones says hello. Oh, Nikisha thinks that you and Thomas will be good rivals for each other. I think so. I and could take him. I could. I could beat him yeah, up. Yeah. See, the bigger, bigger, all the harder they fall, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like a David and Goliath thing. Yes. And also, he might have size. I'm, you know, he might be tall, but I can, you know, fit around tight corners yes. and be crafty. Yes, I right. like that. Okay. Well, they're ready for you to snap on Thomas as well. Um, they want to know who is your favorite character on the Bold and Beautiful, right now, besides yourself, of course. <laughs> do you have one on there? My favorite character. Yeah. Do you have one? Uh, what do you want to know? I like, I mean, I like uh, Eric Forrester. Yeah, he's cool. He's awesome. Yeah. John the patriarch McC of the family. Yeah. Also, John McCook is one of my favorite people there. Oh, uh, yeah. I heard he's very nice. Oh, my gosh. He's the best. I heard he's funny, too. He's someone who's, um, you know, in, in some ways taken me under his wing and, oh, and shown me the ropes. And, uh, oh, good. He's been so kind to me. And, uh, and, and the, there are days that I've been, um, I've been in his dressing room, um, you know, like when he's not there, I, yeah. I, I go to whatever dressing room is available. Oh, okay. Usually that's how it works. Okay. Um, and so when I get to stay in what I call the McCookery, <laughs> those are always good days. And I leave John little notes. Oh, you, you do? Know. Awesome. Yeah. What was the last note you left him? I think I yeah. said something. Oh, gosh. I, you know what? I think it was probably really filthy. Oh, okay. Never mind. So, folks. yeah. Is yeah. It, okay, it's, I yeah. think it was probably, you know, not not PG. Yes. Okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah. You can tell me later. About you um, know, the raves I've thrown in his in the McCookery. A lot of raves in the McCookery. Wait, are you following basketball right now? Yeah. You know, the, you know, they're, 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 I don't I don't watch basketball myself at all. I'm no. a football person. Poor Browns, but I'm a football person. But now the Cavs and I guess the Golden State Warriors are in something. Right. Right now. Right. So I don't know what that is. It's a Cleveland thing. I don't know. I don't know what it right. is. Right. Sports. Yeah, you like me. I don't NBA know finals. The finals, thank you. She's a basketball Final, fan. Finals. finals. Yeah. Finals. <laughs> you sound like me. I'm like, eh. That's yeah. all I ask. I I'm going to like crawl under this desk. Oh, no, I'm on the same, on the same <laughs> way. She, our engineer, knows more about all that than we do. I'm like, eh, that's, that's what I ask. Because it's a Cleveland thing. And sure. You know. Sure. I mean, you know, we're, we're big LeBron fans. Okay, there you go. Since he came back and we sure. beat himself. Sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone else in Cleveland was like, yay, he's back. And I was like, guys, I don't know if we should forget him. <laughs> exactly. He left us. He didn't give us a ring, and he left us. I was like, listen, it's going to take more than an article in Sports Illustrated for me to get back on LeBron's side. I'm going to need a personal <laughs> visit at home where he apologizes to my face. And yes. I say this as someone who's not a sports fan. Right, exactly. But still. But, <laughs> but still. someone who really likes my home city and was very hurt by him leaving. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, people were, people were yeah. angry. So, um, um, still, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Katie Bonet. I want to say your name correctly, or Bonetti. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Oh, she wants Thomas and Saul to become friends. I would love that. I would so love guys, that. So you guys would fight first, and then a bromance happens. That'd be really fun. That would be kind of fun, actually. That'd be fun, because also, you know, what What I don't think the the uh, the fans of the show have gotten to see yet is how much fun Pearson and I have. How much we yeah. laugh. And well, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, he's the funniest guy, and, and we just um, have had the best time. And so I would love if at some point we got to team up and... Uh, yeah. And you know, maybe take, take down somebody else. Take take down, yeah. Bill, dollar bill. Take down dollar bill. Yeah, take down Bill. Yeah. And his the, skyscrapers. That's Why the, is he oh always fondling skyscrapers? That is, he, I I love that he's like, it's not an it, it's a her. I think it's the most funniest. It's so funny. Let's be real. That skyscraper is a him, and he keeps fondling it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Don Diamond. He does such a great job. It's yeah, all he's Bill. great. But yeah, he's always he's, he's always touching it and staring You're at like, it. Like we get it, then, Bill. <laughs> you like skyscrapers. My skyscrapers. I'm like it's so. Oh my god, it's so funny. Put your hands in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, now, also, someone thinks that you and Sally would make a great couple. Oh, that's really nice. 
Someone sent me a link to something the other day on Twitter. Unfortunately, I look at my notifications sometimes. Uh-oh. And someone said that 93% of the fans don't think that Sally and I will ever get together. And I'm like, you know what? You, know, you don't know that for sure. You don't know that for sure. Yes. I am an incredibly skilled lover. <laughs> and I look forward to proving all of those fans That's wrong. right. Yeah. I believe him. Now we're going to show a scene from him on b b Oh, that's commercial. Thank you. It's okay, we're being sponsored today. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you really just... Uh, you like cars, you like trucks. I love cars, like and, and honestly, Toyota has helped me so much in my journey, and uh, I really hope that Toyota can bring you You drove out here to California, right? Now I mean, I drove here exactly. to California in a Toyota. In a 2017 Tundra, in fact. <laughs> oh, that summer drive. We do make it easy, Toyota. There you go. All See, right. they should hire him. We can do voiceovers. I can just hire him. Oh, here we go. Coco might never speak to me again after this. You know, Sally, what is best for this company is best for all of us. That includes Coco. Yeah, I'm not sure she's going to see it that way. Well, if she ever finds out. No, I just... The fashion industry is a lot tougher than we thought, and we are forced to improvise. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of competition these days. Oh, yeah. Way more than when my grandpa and your Aunt Sally were doing their thing. I just, I told myself that I was never gonna cross the line, and now, here I am, seriously thinking about putting a spying device on my sister. Well, you said she's been eyeing this necklace, so now she gets to wear it. <laughs> I like like yeah, your, your reasoning. Yeah, yeah, camera camera inside. <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm supposed to be taking care of Coco and looking out for her. Well, look at it this way. If Spectre starts making money, then Coco will be taken care of. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that. I know, I know, it's just, it just doesn't feel very good. I wanted to do this on the up and up and be a legit designer. And then I got trashed hard by Jarrett Maxwell. What does he know anyway? We, we just can't fold. We can't quit. I just really wish we didn't have to stoop so low. I just feel like I'm disrespecting. Coco. I just, I just like this scene Betraying because and it's it's honestly, a one two scene. It's you and her just talking about your situation, and and you had to an answer for everything, so to speak. Your character, I, I to me, I like its simplicity. It's just like you're just well, no, we gotta do this, and she wanted, she want. I made I laugh because it's like she won the necklace, and now she gets to wear it. I mean, it's kind of like you had to an answer for everything, and she's really going through her brain. Her character's going, I don't really want to do this. And you're trying to do what's best for the company and like and kind of bring them up. I you love know, that scene. The way that I saw that scene also was it was um, an attempt for me to connect with her. Mm -hmm. You know, attempt for me to comfort her. And um, also, I want you to know I have no idea what I'm doing with those tools. Oh no, you you you're, you're, you're like it's just in there. I in there. You know, they, it's in there. thankfully they didn't close up on my hands, but I yes. was like uh, a monkey banging a hammer on a computer. <laughs> that was actually what was happening. That scene was <laughs> You had the my flying glass, the know, Sally. thing, and you know, so, <laughs> well, you look so real. That's good acting. Thank you. I look used, so real. I used my acting skills. They're all Saul's a hard worker. Oh, Matthew M. Payne says hello. He says Saul the tailor. <laughs> you saw him at the Emmys. You talked about the Emmys. Hi, Matthew Payne. So yeah, so funny. Yeah, so hard. So you literally were just like, well, you look you look real to me. So I I can't even. Good. Let's get. <laughs> Good. No idea. So you really can't make jewelry at all, or put a, or put a device in the jewelry that you can't. I know. Like surprised. you buy ring. You what can't what do if it? that was my audition? They're like, assemble this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know, right. Here's what's sad. Um, it was Christmas Eve. I go to my. I have a daughter and I have three grandkids. My daughter puts together all the Christmas presents, and I sit drinking a glass of whiskey. Great. It should be the father. It should be me putting. I'm like, I was never good at that. Nah. When it came to like putting stuff together, I'm like, let the girls do it. They do yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, do what you do best. Yeah. The rest will work itself out. It'll work itself out. Yes. And yeah. if you do have to put together those presents, just make sure they don't do a close up of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be fine. I love it. That's so funny. But yeah. <laughs> but again, but that scene was yes. You were trying to connect with her. Yeah. Like you said it was just. It was, I agree with you. It was just. It was a nice, quiet scene, so to speak. Like, I, I liked it because of that too. I like when they've given me um, 
when, when there have been some intimate moments like that that just feel like two people mm-hmm. trying to connect or you know yeah. that's, that's always that's nice it is nice it felt nice to play it also I'm looking at that scene I feel like I'm like 12 years old there <laughs> oh I, I'm kind of shocked at how I'm like well Sally <laughs> you know like what am I doing um, so I you know I, I think it's interesting uh, watching now and also watching the kinds of uh, things that I'm, you know, where the show is now, yeah. you know, and I kind of feel like I've grown up a little bit. No, yeah, we have, a, we have. Just in the past few months. Yes. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm aging exponentially. <laughs> right? So when I see you next time, you'll be you'll be that 50 year old guy. Yeah, I might so be. What's on that sun? I mean, it, it really manifests itself in like joint pain, you know. <laughs> that's and so that's... true. It's so. Oh no, you're not. You're yeah. not even joking. I'm. I just turned 48 last month, and I'm telling you. I got out of bed sometimes. I'm like, why does that side hurt? Yeah. I stepped on this side. Like, why is that? Why is my arm giving out all of a sudden? It, it, it really is joints. Right. I'm just like one inch off on my pillow, and and my back is screwed up for the next day. Why? Why does that happen? I don't, I don't know either. Why? They don't warn you. People don't warn you. They don't. And I am wearing enough makeup right now for Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> so, exponential aging. <laughs> Yes, it's very much. You chose profession, didn't you? You chose it. It chose me. Let's be real. You know, yeah, it did choose I'm you. I'm a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop if I wanted to. I just keep going. I just keep going and going in this business. What like, a, I mean, what a, I can't do anything else. <laughs> we can't put together anything. Can't put together anything. I can't, we already know I can't yeah, put together no. cameras <laughs> no. um, in small uh, necklaces. No, you can't play sports. I can't play sports, and those are the only other <laughs> careers. Choices you have, exactly. Yeah, it's like those two are acting. I was like, well, I guess I'll do acting. Uh, you know? I guess so. You so know, we'll stick with what this. choice do I have? <laughs> so anyway, so how was your time at the Emmys? Your first time at the Emmys? Oh my gosh, I had the best time. Yeah, I had so I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. It was the coolest thing ever. I was seeing so many people. I yeah. first off, I was seeing friends there. Yes, which was really cool. Yes. But I felt like I belonged there. Dare well, I say? You did. You did. Um, and uh, and also so many people I respect. And did I you talk. You talk to anybody? Did you always want to talk to? You? Yeah, I talked to Margaret Cho. Wow, I like her. It's good. I love her. I love her. I mean, I love stand-up comedy, and, you know, I've always uh, been a big comedy fan, and so I've seen her specials, and and I was standing on the red carpet, and I looked to my right, and I went, oh, God! (laughs) And she's like, what? What? I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just a big fan. Um, (laughs) Oh, cute. Yeah, I mean, that was really neat. I I got to... um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I just uh, was so excited to be there, to be included in something like yeah. that. Um, and to be, um, you know, I've, I haven't been on this soap long, and I already got to be at the daytime Emmys celebrating uh, this this part of our yeah. industry. It was so cool. Were you, because it's, it's all about the clothes, how about you and the clothes? Did you, did you know what you were going to wear? Were you nervous about what are you going to put on? I mean, the guys too nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I if I do it next year, I'm going to, you know, do it better. <laughs> I wore a black suit that I wore to my sister's wedding because it was like, the, or a tux. Yeah. That's all I had. Uh, it's the only thing I had. But I found out I was going to go the night before. Oh. Yeah, it was a very last minute thing. Okay. I was very much at peace with the, okay, I'm not going, that's fine, you know, I'm new to the show, maybe I'll go next year. Yes. Uh, but then I got a last minute ticket and it just all happened so quickly. And yep. so I threw on a this tux and I, I just, you know. Well, you looked very nice. I saw you when you talked to you looked very nice. Thank you. I'm just saying I, I'll, I can do better. I'm playing Saul the Taylor. It could have been tailored right, right, a little right, better, right, right, you know. Right. We could have, we could have, you know, gotten a better fit. My whole character is about a good fit, and I couldn't get a tux. That, you know, whatever. Um, but that it also doesn't matter. You know, I I always watch those red carpet shows though, and, and like talk about Saul the Taylor. And when and when people say, uh, "Who are you wearing?" in my head, I'm like, "Who cares? A, <laughs> I don't care." Uh, that's how I feel watching award shows. That's but I so know funny. not a lot of people share that. No, um, they don't. They they want to know yeah. who it is. And I and I respect that people love the fashion. Um, yeah. I am working on a. I'm playing a fashion centric character yes I could care less about isn't that, isn't that hilarious isn't yeah. that hilarious I could care less I mean yeah. I would have come here in sweatpants if uh, if Jennifer hadn't yelled at me and said take those <laughs> off and put on a collared shirt and I was like okay okay 
Um, I would have too, actually, but I, I can't really, you know. Just no, like no, that. I actually wa I watched um, clips also. I mean, not only to just watch your show and enjoy it, but also to see, okay, what do people wear on this thing? And I saw what Pearson was wearing. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I thought maybe, what if I just came wearing the exact same outfit that Pearson? That would have been funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't put it together fast enough. And if you had it, you have to have warm me so I can put a, post a picture at the same time and say, this is what Pearson wore when he was on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just, you know. <laughs> or you could keep dressed as like Heather Tom when she came on the show. That would have been great. <laughs> she dresses very well. <laughs> hey, uh, I wasn't sure what to wear, so I came wearing Heather Tom's Emmy dress. <laughs> um, I found it in storage. Uh, so here I am, and uh, oh, let's talk about Iron Fist. Okay. <laughs> right, exactly, right, exactly, why you wear a dress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, That's hilarious. Anyway. Um, somebody says, from London, they're sending love to you. You are very funny. Uh, we said he is very funny. Sending love from London. I love London. Well, the thing is, you're you like I said you're on an international soap, not just a not just a daytime you know American, but this show goes around the world. It's really cool. Have you had any? Have you felt the impact yet of that, or not yet? Like in fans I, or anything or nothing? Not or? not really yet. Like I said, I don't yeah, really believe that but, I have. See, now that I brought it, it's, it's going to happen now to you. All of a sudden, you're going to start getting that flood. Well, I should only people. be so lucky as to yes. have, you know, people who appreciate what I do on the show. That would be just yeah. wonderful. I, I I hope that people do. Yeah. I'm, you know, trying hard and hope hoping that they, uh, you know, like what I'm doing. So. Well, you are doing good work. You Thanks. are doing good Thanks, work. Thanks, James. Is there, is there a music? This is my own question. Yeah. I love, I, I, my dream would be, I'm, I mean, I'm not the greatest actor or singer, but I would. I don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, you're so charismatic <laughs> and you have this great booming voice. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're underplaying this. Yes. I, I, but I love to, I love to do a musical one day. I think it'd be so cool just to try it once. Yeah. Is there one that you would love to do? A musical I'd love to do? Yes. Ooh, I'm uh, sure you would do a bunch of them, but is there one you're like, that's one I would love to do. I would just would love to do that. That's a very hard question. Okay. Um, I'm afraid to answer it. Okay. Because I don't want to jinx it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I believe in that. But, that's but you fine. Know, but I will say this. I love new musicals. I love, oh, okay. I love new work. I love uh, developing things. And I love so many of the new things that are happening on Broadway and the way that yeah. um, theater can reflect the things that we are going through today. Dear Evan Hansen, I'm sure I want to see so bad. Yeah, it's incredible. I want you saw it. I've seen it twice. Oh, I want to see it. It's, uh, I was I was sold out when I was there. When I was like, I want to see it so bad. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, if you get any cast album right now, check out Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. I have no personal investment in this other than it's such an incredible show. Yeah. Written by people who I really love and okay. respect. Uh, it's so beautiful and contemporary pop music with yeah. like the best voices on Broadway. It's just great. Check that out. You want to see it? I'm fine seeing Hamilton when it comes to LA. Finally. Oh, it's so good. I, I love the music, so I'm, I can't wait to see it. It's I'm very, so very excited. I got a ticket. I was so happy. It was good. So Whew, it was a little crazy, but I got tickets. I got tickets. It's a great show. I'm excited. But no, I yeah. But if you're in Hanson's one, I really want to see it. I'm like, I just, mm -hmm. I just, it was hard. I, when I was there, it was sold out. Oh, well, one day you'll see it. One, one day. day, I don't one think day. it's going anywhere. I don't, think, I don't think it's going anywhere either. So that's cool. But yeah, he will. He wants to work for any musical you have out there. He'll he'll do. I didn't say that. Oh, you don't say that. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll do anything. I mean, <laughs> Hi, it's Alex Wise. I'm desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you doing any musical. I'll change it down. I can see you doing any kind of musical. Yeah, cool. Musical. All right. You're great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This has been really fun. And I look forward to seeing what else goes on in your just your whole career in general, but also on Bone and Beautiful, of course, that's all. Nice. We want you to win. Does everybody, especially everybody who's in here, Cindy, wants you to win. I want me to win, too, and I have not given up yet, despite what that no. cruel poll said about me. 93%. Yes, <laughs> them. Screw that. Polls can't always be accurate. They're not scientific. I am going to make love to Sally Spectra. <laughs> you heard it here first. Sweet, endless love that lasts over four episodes. Wow, four episodes. Wow, that's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. I see, here's the thing. Thomas could hurt her, and she comes to you for comfort. Well, listen, I don't think... That uh, can happen. I don't think their honeymoon can last forever. Exactly. I can't. Hello, I can't. He's a forester, right? And here I am, all five, seven of me. Yes. Ready to go. Here I am, <laughs> the one that you love. Yeah, exactly. It's him. He's here. He's ready. We do it. Alex Wise, you guys, where can they find you on social media? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Alex Wise, and Instagram, Alex J Wise, because someone stole my name. So follow me. Are they really? Yeah. It's, your last, it's not a common name. It's I like... know, and they don't even use it. Oh, I hate, oh my God, I hate that. Isn't that horrible? The, it's the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone. <laughs> 
first world problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Problems. <laughs> yes. All right, well, thank you, really, yes. thank you for having me. It's really been great. My, it's my, anytime, it's my pleasure. And he's on Bold and Beautiful, which is on CBS every you know every day. CBS, 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 CBS. It's on. It's good. Uh, you can follow us on the Bold Breakdown, which is here every Sunday at 8 p.m. and our Facebook page, and this will be on there also. And on iTunes and and on YouTube, this interview will be under the Bold and Beautiful After Show, and it's a Bold and Beautiful interview. And you just type in Alex Wise. That's S W Y S E. Type that in, and you'll be able to see this interview over and over again. Or go on iTunes and listen to us talk. Because we're bold and, and we're beautiful. Oh, yes, he's good. Goodbye. And he's done. We'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.